How do we come up with this list? The first rock to look under is simply what might you want to deny? And why is that important? Well, I'll start like this. It fascinates me how much about proper communication that most of us, if not all of us, already have built into us internally. And specifically in regards to this skill, all of us have either, have either done or heard a conversation that started with something along the lines of, I don't want you to think that I'm a jerk. I, I don't want you to feel like I'm attacking you. I don't want you to get upset. I don't want you to think this is disrespectful. We do that because we know there's a really good chance that's how they're gonna feel as a result of what we have to lay out for them. Unfortunately, when we say, when we phrase it as, I don't want you to think, not only are we denying that we're connecting ourselves to that negative thought, we're also the intention, the received intention behind that is, you are not justified in feeling this way. And again, us telling them that they aren't justified to feel it infringes on their autonomy. Like, I know you're probably gonna feel, but you, you, know, you shouldn't know because well, that's good reasons. One really slight two millimeter tweak, which is really what this skill is based off of, is instead of the denial, we have to accept and acknowledge that it exists. And so a slide we're gonna show shortly is how we phrase it instead of, I don't want you to think that I'm a jerk. It's, you're probably going to think that I'm a jerk or simply go all the way in with, you will think that I'm a jerk. We gotta acknowledge that the negative is there. We gotta acknowledge that they, have, they are in fact justified in thinking it. When we deny it, it gets people's guard up. We've all felt the guard instantly go up when somebody says, I don't want you to think I'm disrespectful, right? We instantly are like, all right, here it comes. You're going to be disrespectful. And I'm already mad before you've even said what you got to say. And so this is why we phrase it like this. One of the things that makes this hard, in addition to the fact that it's very counterintuitive, especially to our natural communication, is... Your counterpart likely sees it as truth. And we likely see it as nonsense. And so it's much easier for us to start to articulate whatever negatives might exist if we accept the fact that we won't be able to rationalize it. And so this whole idea, right? This you can't handle the truth, right? Jack Nicholson here for a few good men. This angry reaction of you can't handle the truth, that's what our counterparts feel when we show our own fear in the face of these negatives. What it shows as a communicator for us when we deny these things, when we don't take time to acknowledge them, when we tend to ignore them and hope that they go away is it actually shows that we're fearful of them. And it's much harder to respect someone in the tough business world that we occupy now if the counterparts we're dealing with show fear of negative reaction. And so that's part of the reason why this is such a great way to build rapport rather than using common ground is because you show fearlessness in the face of potential problems and a true willingness and intention to make them go away so that we can move forward as a team. And so we start our list by what are the things that we want to take away their permission and authority to use against us? In addition, the ripple effect of that is when we lay it out, it shows a deep understanding on our side. It's not common ground. It does in fact lead to the trust-based influence. How do we become a trusted advisor? How do we become someone that when we say things, they genuinely take them into account? 
this is a great place for it to start. And this is our structure. There's several examples here. You probably think, you might think, you may believe. That's our basic structure. Another, another thing that's not on this list that's a great usage in the accusations on it is I would imagine. And so you're probably going to think that I'm a jerk. I would imagine that what I have to say is going to seem exhausting. You are going to feel like this is disrespectful. And then if it's money related, you can throw in. And lastly, I'd imagine you're going to think that this is a money grab. That's a potential accusations audit you should use. We want to prep these in advance because they're very hard to come up with in the moment. We want to have them ready to go on the hip, ready to be fired when we walk into the room. And it usually takes, you know, somewhere about between 10 and 15 minutes to come up with them. An exhaustive list is always better. And as far as the delivery method, sequencing them out, because you might come up with a list of 10, 12. In some cases with people that we've coached, we've gotten a list of 22. We got a list of 17 negatives that we want to address. Number one, don't leave any out. If you came up with a list of 17, the one that you leave off is going to be the one that comes back to bite you later on down the line. And then secondly, we want to rank them to a certain degree, but really we want to rank them just what's the, what's the worst or most important, and then what's the second worst or second most important. And the one that is second, that's the opener for our accusations audit. The one that's most important, most impactful, the biggest negative of the list that we have that's the one we want to end with. And as you all know, the last impression is the lasting impression. We want the last thought in their head to be, wow, they really see the main crux of this issue. They really get the main part of my motivation and what drives my morals. And that's going to be their lasting thought in their head.